Hey everyone, my name is Wei Xiang and welcome back to Radio Heat Wave, the hottest thing on campus. With us today, we have a very special singer who has found her way through TikTok, gaining over 110,000 followers and having a total of 2.1 million likes. She's growing faster than ever and pretty much if you hear her voice, you will fall in love with it. She went on to release an EP called Bedroom Summer and has gained over 10,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. And she's none other than Emma. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so how are you? Uh, I'm good. I just ended school, actually. Oh, you just ended school. So do you miss the home-based learning? <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually really liked home-based learning. At first, I didn't like it, but now I really miss it because I can't take naps during recess time. All right. I mean, like, at home, you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the TikTok. Okay. So when did you realize that your videos were like going viral and like taking off on TikTok? Um, I think one of the first videos that I posted um, was with my brother actually. Um, and it was, we were just singing in the bathroom. Um, we sang like fly me to the moon and we literally posted it. Like I posted it at like 11 PM and I didn't, I really didn't think anything of it. Um, and it was also when I had just like kind of gained the confidence to post on TikTok because I don't know, at, at that time when I started TikTok, it was very like, people were kind of like, mm, why are you on TikTok? Oh, yeah. So um, yeah, and then literally the next morning I woke up and it had like so many likes and comments and I was I was in shock lab because um, I, I wasn't expecting it to blow up because it was just like, just something that me and my brother were doing for fun. Yeah, so that week I think I gained like 2,000 followers in one week and I was so happy. Um, so after that, I just like kept on posting. Um, and then more recently, um, I did a like a duet video to like, um, like I'm Gonna Lose You by Megan Trainer, And that video, I think it reached like America's For You page. Cause now it has like 4 million views or something. Like it's oh, wow. crazy. Yeah, so I think that video actually kind of um, really like charged me from 45K to 100K in like two weeks. Yeah, so that was like, just over the past few weeks that I reached 100k yeah so it's been crazy yeah so basically you went from Singapore to like all over the world <laughs> being, <laughs> like, of, yeah. being like a few weeks so was yeah. your so was the phone like like spamming with notifications oh you have like, to like mute it now I don't I don't know whether it's just my phone or something, but my TikTok notifications don't actually come through. Like my notifications are on, but they don't come through. But when I open the app, yeah, you can, there's like a message box at the bottom oh, yeah, of the notifications. Yeah. yeah. So like there was, when I, when I, when that video um, blew up and I opened my like notifications, it was like so many thousands of likes and comments. And yeah, it was, I was just overwhelmed. So you were quite shocked the, the morning yeah. after, right? You were like, wait, yeah. <laughs> you were like, wait, hang on. I was not expecting it to blow up. So has anything changed ever since getting like so many fans around the world? Um, to be honest, like my lifestyle hasn't really changed, but um, I definitely have like I'm very very grateful for all the support that I've received. Um, like almost on a daily basis, I receive like messages from different followers and stuff mm. like that. You know, like just saying that they really like my singing, and I really really appreciate it. Um, and. Apart from that, actually only one time, I think, um, someone has actually come up to me in public and said that like, oh, I saw you from TikTok. But that was um, a few months before Circuit Breaker even happened. Mm. So yeah, like apart from that, not really. I don't think anybody has come up to me yet. So in a sense, um, my normal daily life hasn't changed. But um, online, I definitely like talking to my followers and stuff like that. It's very fun. Yeah. All right. So must let your audience know that there's something to be shy right they can just approach yeah up to you <laughs> yeah it's definitely better sometimes i see people staring from afar <laughs> and it's kind of uncomfortable because like i mean i don't want to assume that they're looking at me but sometimes they make it kind of obvious so yeah i would just prefer people come up and say hi rather than like you know stare from afar but yeah yeah i'm quite sure like a lot of singaporeans know you i mean i was talking to my really good <laughs> team i was like hey you know emma and like everyone's like oh yeah we've seen her on tiktok yeah. Honestly, I, I'm very shocked every single time that someone says that they know who I am because I don't know, lah, like just from my perspective, like I'm just having fun, mm. you know, and just, just doing it for fun. Like I never had the intention of like getting famous, but um, it just kind of happened in a sense. Um, I don't see myself as famous either. Um, mm. I'm Like TikTok honestly is um, not super like 100k followers yeah. on tiktok is not really yeah. like a celebrity you know what i'm saying i just it's just something that um i enjoy doing but it's amazing that so many of my friends friends 
know who I am. And then like, yeah, my friends will tell me that, oh, my friend posted you on their story. And I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's just interesting um, how fast it spread and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so just like you talk about like receiving a lot of me- uh, messages from fans, right? So like mm-hmm. you find an additional pressure to like respond to them or like, like uh, respond to their song requests. Oh yeah. Um, I feel so bad um when I'm not able to reply to everybody, um, cause I know that um, like if I was gonna if I wanted to gain the courage to message someone that I found like maybe I idolized them, um, and they didn't reply, I would feel sad. So I feel very <laughs> bad when I don't um get to reply everyone. But like um yeah, I don't really have time to read every single message and reply every single message. But I try my best to reply. Um, and for the song requests, yeah, I, I get a lot of song requests and mm-hmm. like um. It's hard for me because like sometimes I don't even know the song and I feel so bad because I can't like I don't really have time to learn a whole new song just to do a short cover um and then also with so many requests I can't finish all of them you know so like um I try my best to do the ones that have like the most likes because maybe that like I know that that means more people um Mm -hmm. want it so I try to do those ones um and yeah I try to reply as many dms as I can um and sometimes I don't reply because they're a bit scary so mm. yeah yeah like sometimes you don't really know who they are right like no no pictures or anything yeah and also because okay i posted this one tiktok as a joke <sighs> i feel very bad because it, it <laughs> i don't know whether it's offensive or not but there's this one tiktok that i posted as a joke which was like um like hi i'm emma i'm 18 I've seen that um, one. and you want to be one. friends right <laughs> oh my gosh and the, i still receive so many messages today <laughs> from like older men and people saying like hi emma let's be friends and yeah i just don't reply because i get very scared and i'm yeah it was supposed to be a joke but mm, some people didn't get it but it's uh, okay yeah. yeah so have any like celebrities uh messaged you or anything so far? Oh, um recently after that four million video mm-hmm. i got some messages from like some a verified person honestly i don't really know who he is but i think uh. he's a youtuber um but yeah, I've gotten comments on the video from like different verified creators um, and a few DMs from, um, yeah, from that verified person. So kind of, not really celebrities that I know, yeah. but um, <laughs> they have a verified tick sign. So yeah, <laughs> that's quite cool. Okay, so let's talk about your EP, Bedroom Summer. So like, what's the inspiration behind it? Um, to be very honest, um, there isn't much inspiration. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I was just bored during Circuit Breaker. <laughs> and um, so before that, I had already released like a few singles. But um, actually, it was after I wrote College Boy with my friend Xavier. And he was saying that like, maybe you should think about making an album. And I was like, well, I mean, yeah, Circuit Breaker, like there's so much time. And I mean, I should be studying, but I wanted to do yeah. something for fun on the side, right? So, so yeah, I just like spent the holiday time like, during Circuit Breaker and then the May holidays to start writing some songs and I wrote it here. So, I mean, it's called Bedroom Summer because Mm -hmm. it was literally like a summer spent in my room. And yeah, so I wrote all the songs like probably where I'm sitting right now, like on my bed and I recorded them on my bed um, and did all the editing and everything here. So, um, all the songs on there, um, I, I wasn't, at first actually, I had like two or three other songs that were originally supposed to be on it. But then after listening to them, I kind of hated them. So I just like scrapped them, restarted again. And I was really happy because I got to work with um, Xavier again for two of the songs and my other friend, May. So yeah, collaborating with people um, definitely helped me. And I think like writing this EP was just a really good way for me to help, to help me get through Circuit Breaker. Yeah. So it kind of like a stress reliever at the same yeah. time. So all the magic kind of happened in your bedroom, right? In, in one room. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is a personal question. You know, for your song Take Me to April, right? Was it based on the true story? Take me back to April. Um, <laughs> I mean, okay. Uh, the song itself, I think all the lyrics are very literal. Like I wrote mm. them mm-hmm. very literally. Um, I would say it's kind of based on a true story. Um, but, um, evidently nothing came out of it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I mean, it's fine. (laughs) Um, I'm just glad because honestly, that song is probably the most heartfelt song that I've written just because of how, yeah, how true the lyrics are to Mm -hmm. me. Like, I mean, if you really read the lyrics, it really reads like a, like this really came 
from a very true story. Um, and I think that's kind of also the idea I wanted to give. Like, I wanted it to have a storyline. And surprisingly, there were people that re really related with the song, which I found kind of surprising because I thought it was a very specific story. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there were people that related. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just glad that people um, enjoyed it and empathized with it. So yeah. Yeah, because the first time I heard the song, I was like, oh, like you use the lyrics like purple lime, like oh, back at home, yeah, in Singapore. Yeah. I'm like wow. I'm actually, I'm so happy that I included that line. Mm -hmm. At first, I was gonna change it because I thought it sounded a bit weird, but now that I think about it, um, I'm very glad that I included you know Singapore elements mm -hmm. in it, just so like I don't know, even if there's a small chance of it getting you know into like the more American side or whatever, more mm -hmm. Western world. Um, there's always like the element of home inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just I'm happy that I included that line. Okay, so what is three words that you were used to de to describe your music? Oh my gosh, honestly, I hate describing my own music. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think if I really had to choose three words, um. Firstly, sad. I know it's um, <laughs> I, I I never intend for my songs to turn out, like to turn out sad. Like I usually start writing it with like kind of happy feelings, but it comes mm -hmm. out sad all the time. I don't know why, but I mean it's fine. Um, second word probably relatable. A lot of people have told me that my song lyrics are relatable, mm -hmm. which honestly, it's interesting for me because a lot of my songs, right? Actually, almost all of my songs are written about like relationships and stuff like that but I've actually never been in a relationship. So the fact that oh, wow. my songs about relationships can relate to people in relationships, I think that's that's really cool. Um, and the last song, I think, uh, last song, the last word, sorry, to describe yeah. my music, I would say um, maybe like soothing, like kind of letting people know that, you know, whatever you're going through, you're not alone. There's other people that also identify with this. And yeah, it just creates like a nice community of common feelings, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people find your music very comforting. You know, I personally do find it very comforting when I listen to oh, it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so, uh, so among all the songs that you put out, right, which one would you say, like, is your favourite and, like, why? I think my favourite probably Take Me Back to April just because mm. of the meaning that it has to me. Mm. But I'm also, like, the song that I really hold very close to me is I Like You, But <laughs> just because mm. um, it was my first original song. I wrote it, like, last year around Christmas time. Because I was just, again, I was just bored. Um, <laughs> and that song actually, I think it got on one of, like, Discover Weekly or something. Like, it has my, it's my most streamed song. Um, and the, like, that song originally did really well because so many people identified with it. You know, the idea of liking someone, um, but you're not sure if they like you back. They're just that whole idea. And I think some people even use the song to like confess to their crushes or something, which is crazy. <laughs> oh. um, yeah. So that song, I think, is very special to me. Um, and that's why I made a remastered version in my EP mm -hmm. because I did not like the first version of it. A lot of people told me that the vocals weren't loud enough. So I tried to like fix it and I added a little bit more just to make it more full. Yeah. So it's like a proud little baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, you know, managing your college and music is not the most simple thing ever. So, like, what are the some challenges that you face? To be honest, I am someone that gets distracted so easily. Mm -hmm. um, the whole time that I was um, writing my EP, it was during Circuit Breaker, so and home-based learning and I kept finding myself like making excuses to go and write songs instead of studying um so yeah there's definitely a difficulty in finding a balance because like I enjoy making music a lot and it's something that I can really carry myself away with like when I record I take like hours just because I want to get the perfect take um so yeah luckily now that my EP is like you know published and everything I don't have an excuse to make music instead of studying so hopefully I can focus all my time on my studies now but yeah that was probably one challenge yeah so like probably time management will be very useful right in this case yeah <laughs> okay so who are your biggest inspirations to be honest um I'm not really somebody that like idolizes celebrities mm -hmm. I don't know it's kind of weird my friends always say that I'm very weird for it but I've never like been a fangirl of anyone but I think that um, what keeps me going is really my friends and my family. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just super supportive. Ever since I started TikTok and started making music, you know, they're always helping me share on Instagram and, like, or, like, helping me um, by giving me feedback and stuff like that. I have, like, a group, a small group of friends that I always, like, when they come over or I'll send them 
voice recordings like of the song before I publish it and just ask them for feedback and you know like it's always helpful um when they tell me because they will give me the honest truth you know so it's always helpful to have that group of people supporting me and my parents are amazing they have supported me in everything that I do they always share on Facebook and stuff like that <laughs> so yeah I'm really grateful for everyone around me uh okay okay very interesting so if you could collaborate with anyone like dead or alive who would it be <laughs> oh that's a very hard question um probably mm, ariana grande sounds crazy but yeah. yeah her voice is amazing um and I, people comment and tell me that sometimes i sound like her and that makes mm. me feel like so humbled as well just because i she's an, an amazing singer and i love a lot of her songs so yeah i mean it's probably a very far off dream but if it could be possible i would collaborate with her yeah yeah i mean you never know right maybe one day it might actually happen <laughs> So, would you say like any of those songs behind actually influence your music in any way? Um, so, the songs behind me, they are like my favorite songs. I actually haven't added to the wall in a while. I wanted to add right. one more role because I've got like a new wave of favorite songs recently. Oh. Um, but um, like uh, this is like Nothing by Bruno Major. Mm -hmm. I love Bruno Major's songs. I always like, I've always wanted to try and achieve his kind of sound with like the guitar and stuff. But I can't play the guitar. So actually, all my songs are made on GarageBand. So all the music and everything is like fake instrument sounds. So I'm hoping that mm -hmm. someday either I'll learn how to play the guitar or um, I can get like live, a more live feel. Because yeah, right now right, everything yeah. is on software. Um, this is Hate Everything by Golden. This is actually my current favorite song. It's kind of pessimistic, but it, it's kind of, in a sense, it's similar to my songs because it's kind of sad and a bit negative. But um, I don't know. The song kind of speaks to me in a way. And the it has a lot of, like, piano as well. And I really like that sound. That's why in Take Me Back to April, I kind of tried adding more, like, piano sounds um, just to, like, try out and see how it sounds like. Yeah. So, wait, so right now all your music are, like, about in the garage band, right? So, yeah. like, do you know any theory beforehand or is it just, like, the trial oh. and error? Okay, so the only, like, instrument learning I did, I learned piano when I was, like, really young. So I started um, when I was maybe, like, six or seven. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped lessons in, like, primary four or five. Um, and I never did exams. I always just learned for fun. Mm -hmm. But I stopped in primary four or five. So, like... I know like chords and stuff like that and um, I don't know in my head I can hear like not hear but I can imagine what chord I want so I will like sound it out with my voice and then find the right note if I can't find it um, that kind of thing yeah so I, I can't sight read anymore I used to be able to when I was younger mm. but that's why everything I do is more on software because it's easy for me to find the notes and yeah sometimes I google the chord if I don't know <laughs> how to how to find the sound yeah Wow, but right there is talent. You are, you are able to hear like which chord you want to you want to put insert. Wow. Okay. So uh, you know you have been invited to a lot of like several uh, different events and projects like Team mm. Dinosaur and like Project Liberosis. So how were like those experience like for you? Okay, so actually last year I was a core member of my own YFC project. So mm -hmm. being invited by these YFC projects to perform, like I understand how tough it is to organize a concert. Yeah. Um, and this year it's online, which is even crazier because, you know, they have to do all the editing, put it all together in a super long video and figure out how to use the YouTube live stream function and stuff like that. Like, wow, honestly props to them. Cause I can't even imagine, like I organized a real life, con like my team organized a real life concert mm -hmm. and it was already difficult enough. So I can't imagine doing it online. But um, yeah, so being invited to perform, I was obviously very honored to be invited. And um, I think it's a really great way to like, you know, give back mm -hmm. um, in a way that also doesn't take up a lot of my time because I could just record a video and just send it to them. Mm -hmm. um, and also like, I kind of have stage fright. Like I can't sing, I haven't sung live before, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah so like all of my singing and stuff, apart from TikTok, which is kind of live, I guess, um, has been like, recorded i record it and then i post it so it's edited like in the videos and stuff like that so i think this was like kind of start like a nice way to cushion myself into performing because mm -hmm. um it helps me kind of i don't have to worry about stage fright um 
when it's online. So um, hopefully sooner or later I can like gain more confidence to perform live. Yeah. I think all of us are looking forward to your very first live performance. Make sure to invite <laughs> us at Rio Wave. Over. Sure. Okay, so what's next for you? You know, after all this whole COVID thing and and like in the next few years. So coming up, the next thing that I have coming is my A levels. So, right. <laughs> um, I've been trying to put my projects on hold, like mm-hmm. any projects that I'm planning to do on hold, bef- so that I can focus on my studies. But I have to say, it's very difficult because I keep mm-hmm. getting distracted. Um, but, um, I'm definitely excited because I have. I think I have a few collaborations lined up for after A levels. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm definitely um, excited to work with new people, and I think I have I have one idea for a single after A levels. So <laughs> hopefully that's gonna work out well. Um, and yeah, I think it's actually just crazy how like TikTok helped me to meet so many people in the same industry, and they're all like my age as well. So it's like crazy because um, you wouldn't expect there to be so many. Um, you know, also like young people that are mm-hmm. interested in the same things. And yeah, I think like, it's very weird, but TikTok has really like kind of changed my life in a way because I've just met so many new people from it. And yeah, it's crazy. Right. So will we be expecting a song about A-levels? <laughs> oh, this, okay. It's kind of, mm, I don't know whether I want to say this. Um, kind of a spoiler, I guess. Okay. Um, that the, the one idea that I have for um, after A-levels right now in my head. I don't know whether I'm going to do it, but the idea that I'm trying to have is some kind of graduating song for my class. Um, and I'll try to get as many classmates to pitch in as possible. Yeah, that's wow. all. Wow. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's let's stop right there before we release too much yeah. information <laughs> out there. Okay, so now we're going to play a very quick game. It's called Quick Fire. Sure. Yeah, so basically, I'll ask a question then you will just answer with the first thing that you can think of. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the first thing that you think of. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Right, let's begin. All right. First question. Favorite TikToker. Uh, Moop. Okay. So, uh, what is one song that you wish you wrote and recorded? Ooh. As in, like someone else's song that I wish yeah. I sang. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> stuck with you. I have no idea. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, your favorite subject in school? Ooh, GP. General wow, paper. GP. Wow, GP. That's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, your favorite cuisine? Cuisine, Italian. I love Italian food. Wow. So like like spaghetti, all those kind yeah, of things? Yeah, pasta. Pasta. Okay, your f- favorite current so- uh, your current favorite song? Hate Everything. Right there. Okay, so if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Apart from Singapore, I think somewhere in the UK. UK. Um, actually, reason why, I grew up in the UK, actually. I was born in Scotland and then I moved over when I was like P3 but I don't think I'll move back to Scotland I think I want to try like London or something oh wow okay that's something very interesting oh so you were born there (laughs) yeah oh okay so okay next question where do you see yourself in 10 years oh hopefully doing something that I enjoy which is probably singing I hope I (laughs) I am not sure yet (laughs) 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 okay Uh, what's your favourite movie favourite movie Up it's actually here. Up. Oh wow, you even got your favorite movies there. Yeah, I stole these from TikTok. These films. Oh. <laughs> okay. So is there one weird talent that you have? Oh gosh. Um I feel like I feel like there is and I can't even remember what it is. I don't know. I always um I don't know if it's considered a talent, but I always slip into different accents when I'm talking to my friends. Like it just happens. Yeah. <laughs> so you have like a different accent for everybody. <laughs> Yeah, or like, I don't know, it's become like a very bad habit of just slipping into a British accent when I'm talking to my friends. (laughs) And my friends will do it back as well. I think it's it's a TikTok thing. It's getting to me. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, okay. And that's all the time we have today. Do follow Emma on TikTok at IEmmaPotato, Instagram at EmmaPig, and YouTube. As you have heard, there will be more songs and covers coming up. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Emma. No problem. Thank you for having me. Hey Nian Polly, I'm Emma and you're listening to the hottest campus radio station in Singapore, Radio Heatwave.